I feel violated. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say why I really do though. I, I want to report this so bad to somebody, uh, but who would do anything? So I've said that I'm, I have been working, you know, a, a short time now at a freestanding psych hospital. This is the most dangerous one I've ever been to. And I've been to dangerous ones. I, I can usually, you know, figure out my way, but this was off the scales. Okay. So, um, I, uh, was put I was supposed to get three days orientation shadow somebody but it never happens I got one day so fine no big deal I've I've done this long enough I can I can figure it out most of it it's fine so they put me over on adolescent unit with two 16 year old boys that are aggressive okay it's only two you think oh it's no big deal well it can be it was just me and attack one of the kids escalated. He had a high blood sugar, over 300, and he started freaking out at, like um, like four hours into my shift, just out of the blue. I think maybe some of it had to do with his high blood sugar, possibly. But he started freaking out about all the cameras in the ceiling, okay? And there's a ton of them. I've said there's a ton. The one place they don't have cameras is in the rooms, which that's where they should be because you can put them in the rooms to where you can't see in the bathroom so it can still offer privacy to the patient, yet it can be um, a game changer if, say, somebody is trying to hurt themselves. You can see right away, get in there. So this kid comes running up to me. I had, I had pulled his in insulin. Um, he's escalating already. I had to call the house supervisor to come over because you have to get a second set of eyes when you drop insulin to make sure you both see the same units. And so at this point, he's like, no, there's cameras in my bathroom. I'm like, there's not even cameras in your room. They just want to monitor employees. I didn't realize how much though. So um, I go down to his room with him. I go in the bathroom and there's this flashing light in the ceiling. And I say, it's the sprinkler. It's not a camera. I promise you, you, there's no camera in your room. No, no, you're lying. Starts punching the walls, everything. Okay, so, okay, I'm trying to de-escalate him. Okay, the su supervisor comes over at this point. The kid doesn't want to take any insulin. Um, so we just kind of stay there and, and, and let him try to just, you know, um, wear himself out. He eventually agrees to taking um, the insulin. Well, actually, before he took the insulin, he barricaded himself uh, in his room. So we have this tool that we can open the door the opposite way to get in there. But this is why you want cameras in the room, because it's a, it's a, it's a game changer and lifesaver. What ended up happening was when we opened the door, the kid was right by the door on his mattress with a blanket over his head. The tech took the blanket off. And he had this scrub shirt, like, just hanging over the top of his head. And I saw him untying a sheet. Yeah, he had taken a, the bed sheet, wrapped it around his neck, and, and tied it in a bunch of knots. So that's, yeah, now, now you lose all linens. It doesn't matter if you're a kid or an adult. When you do that, you lose all linens. Pillowcases, sheets, blankets, everything. You just get a mattress because of safety reasons. So he doesn't know that yet. We get rid of the linens, okay? Finally, let he calms down enough to where we can give him the insulin, and then he ends up falling asleep. He wore himself out. So, put him on a linen restriction, do the incident report, all this. Then the suit house supervisor says, go on break. So, I did. I came back from break, and she's like, why don't you take all... She had the round sheets. It's We do 15-minute rounds on kids. Now, both of these patients, I only had the two were across their rooms were across from each other so there's a chair in the middle of because you can see both of them because the doors aren't allowed to be shut so I go and I I take over the rounds and I I figured the tech was coming back well no he never came back and so the nurse supervisor goes up to the nurse's station she starts shutting off all the lights on the unit all of them except for the hallway I'm in she left those lights on and then left and I'm like, okay, I have a feeling that's this is where I'm staying for the the, the, the next four uh, over four hours, and it was. So, um, here's the thing: they want you to go into rooms with a flashlight, shine it on the patient, so you can see that their chest is 
um, rising and falling, okay? Um, this this uh, pisses patients off all the time, okay? So when I have a kid that had already, you know, because let me back up a little bit. The kid did wake up and he asked for his blanket. And I thought, oh, this isn't going to go well. Well, I got him a snack that seemed to appease things. And then he ended up falling back asleep. And I, I just told him, you can't have any linens. So he ended up falling back asleep. So now I'm on this unit, but in between both these rooms, the kids are sleeping. And I'm by myself. Now, at, there's times when staff does, because every hospital shorts you so much, that, yeah, you have to go to do a bathroom break or five minutes. That's one thing. But to outright leave a nurse in the hallway on a unit by herself and the next unit over is three units down, the closest people are. And nobody, like, it makes no sense. It's not safe. It's designed to get people hurt. It really is. It's just, and you know, cameras in the room would have, we would have known sooner this kid what he had been doing and got, got right away got the blanket off of him. So, um, it all of it is just shady. But this is the worst part, okay? And the most violating part is there was a mill, there's a milieu manager on each shift. They usually will handle de-escalating a patient. I, they're never around when you need it. Sometimes they are. They're, they're pretty good. But he had come over to check on me a couple times. And I thought, well, that's interesting. He knows I'm the only, like, I've never worked anywhere where anybody thinks it's okay, no matter how many patients you have, to just leave you alone completely. So he came and checked on me. And I think he even gave me a break once, but he never stayed on the unit with me. Instead, he was in his office. Yeah, watching me because he let me know last night. Because the, I guess apparently the chief nursing officer of this place, okay, the idiot she is, comes in every day. Every day at 4 a.m., she goes to this milieu manager's office and sits in the office and they watch the employees. And so I got to be the one being watched um, the night before last. They sat at a computer and watched me. And up, oh, she didn't get up. Yeah, there was like a, over an hour I didn't get up. Because again, I'm in between both patients. I can see them. I can hear them without even looking at them. But if I look, oh, I see, I see. I can hear them roll over. I can see them roll over. So why? here's why it's unsafe what this chief nursing officer would expect or this milieu manager is that you have left me as the only nurse in this situation. There's no other staff. Nobody, nobody will know if something happens. But you want me to get up off the chair, go into the room that's right there. I can see everything. Shine a flashlight onto a kid that, that always pisses them off. Every patient, they hate that. It wakes them up. And you want me to risk this kid escalating all because of your pompous, arrogant, poor leadership, not realizing that if you're in the effing building... And you're a chief nursing officer. The first thought that should go through your uh, head is let me get over there because she's the only one on the unit. We just don't do that. There should always be somebody else on the unit. You never know what can happen. No, she doesn't do that. No, her and her higher educated self sat in that office and they timed me. And the milieu manager told me. And then another nurse told me, yeah, she comes in every morning at 4 a.m. just to watch employees. So she is garbage. And I'm so glad I didn't run into her because I would have told her what an unsafe leader she is. For over four hours, I was by myself. I've never had that happen. Never. And yet they have the audacity and creepiness to sit in an office and watch me on camera. It's sick, twisted. I feel violated. 